For years, I have been beating my head against the wall, wondering why the heck all the computers I use to edit videos with completely suck. Then I switched to Apple, I sold everything I had, alienated my Windows brethren, and you know what? It was awesome. It worked great. I became an Apple fanboy. Damn it! Now, after about eight months in the Apple ecosystem, I still think it's great, but to be honest, there's things I miss. I miss being able to upgrade my computer. I miss gaming. And let's be honest, Apple stuff isn't cheap. My friend recently gave me some parts to help me build a decent Windows desktop, which I talked about in my last video, and I was excited to see how it would perform since I've learned a lot over the last year. I booted up Resolve, grabbed some 4K 10-bit footage out of my Sony ZV-E1 camera because that's the quality I like, and it was the same experience I previously had. It sucked. Sure, I can make proxies, but what is happening? Are Windows computers just that bad compared to Apple computers at video editing? But then I discovered something. After countless hours of digging around the interwebs, I finally found what I was looking for, an explanation to why everything I had been doing over the years was wrong. Why? Why did it take me so long to find this? Check this out. This is a chart from Puget Systems that shows which GPUs and CPUs support hardware decoding for different codecs in DaVinci Resolve. I shoot H.264 10-bit 422, now with a 20-series NVIDIA card and an 8th gen Intel CPU. Oh look, a red X. What does that mean? That can't be good. Damn. But okay, so in the chart below, it shows the 20 series GPU, which is what I have now, supports hardware decoding for H.265 420 10-bit. Now 420 isn't quite as good for color grading, but let's be real, I'm doing YouTube here, not working on John Wick films. I know my camera shoots in 10-bit 420, but in my mind, since H.265 is more compressed than H.264, it should be harder to video edit, right? Well, I had to find out right away. I grabbed some quick footage in both codecs from my ZV-E1, and this is what happened. Here's me editing on H.264. You know what I've been using, the one with the red X on the Puget Systems chart. It sucks. Now, here's me editing on the H.265 420 codec with supported hardware decoding. It works so much better. Damn it. Like four computers ago, I had an Intel 11th gen with a 3080 RTX video card. That computer was awesome, but I sold it because I thought it sucked at video editing. It turns out I was just recording in and working with the wrong codec. A codec that the GPU and CPU didn't have hardware decoding for. I could still be rocking a 3080. And when I switched to Apple, well, it turns out that their silicon chips have built-in video encoders and decoders for H.264 and H.265, so no wonder I thought their computers were so frickin' fantastic, they edited like a boss compared to the Windows computers I was using before because they had hardware decoders and the Windows machines did not. As it turns out, hardware video encoders and decoders are the special sauce for video editing. <sighs> now, to be fair, you can use proxies or convert your footage to say ProRes, but that takes time. And once you get a taste for smooth video editing straight out of camera, well, that's all I wanna do. You can have all the horsepower in the world, but if you don't have hardware decoders, you're gonna have a bad time. So check this out. This file is my old 10-bit 422 H.264, which I now know isn't supported with my GPU or CPU. Look in Task Manager at what happens when I try editing this footage on the Windows machine. My CPU goes ding 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 ding. It's working at 100%. It's choppy. This experience sucks. Now check out me working on this footage with the Windows computer, the 10-bit 420, which is supported by the GPU. The CPU relaxes and the GPU starts to dance. And since it has hardware decoders for this codec, this job is so much easier now. This experience doesn't suck. Without decoders, the CPU takes on a job it's not really built for, and since this is an older CPU, it's just terrible at that task. It can't handle it. Now, to be fair, the Apple CPUs are also really good, which is another reason why they are so great. I mean, just because you have hardware encoding and decoding doesn't mean it's a perfect experience. The CPU speed still matters, but this revelation about hardware decoders for me changes everything. This is the most important piece to the puzzle. 
See, before I knew this, when I compared my M1 Max to pretty much any Windows computer using my 4K H.264 footage, it smoked them because Apple had the encoders and decoders in the Windows machines I use did not. Now, when I compare even my 8th gen Intel running an RTX 2070 versus the M1 Max, both using hardware decoders, it's a much closer fight. And to be fair, this 8th gen Intel is from 2017. Crazy, right? And like I said in my previous videos, having a dedicated video card makes using things like VFX, Magic Masks, Relight, etc. so much better, like it's not even close there. Apple stuff is not that great for that. My takeaway is this, if you are going to buy a computer to edit videos on like I did, you must absolutely make sure that whatever you buy has hardware decoding on it for the types of files you will be working on. Whether it's the CPU or GPU, it doesn't really matter, just make sure one of them supports the codecs. Do we benefit from having both the CPU and the GPU having decoding? Does it stack and make the video editing experience even better? That I don't know. I've been trying to find out by asking around on Reddit, but nobody's given me a good answer yet. So if you know whether or not there is a benefit to having the CPU and GPU both supporting hardware decoding, please let us know in the comments below. But I do know that as long as you have one, your video editing will be smooth. And that's the whole point. I personally think the most important thing when video editing is to have a smooth editing experience. I scrub fast and split quick. I don't want to wait around for even milliseconds when I'm in the zone, so having a fast CPU with hardware decoders is what you want. That's why Apple stuff is so good. Their CPUs are awesome and their silicon chips have built-in video encoders and decoders on them. And the Max chips are ideal for video editing because they have double the hardware encoders and decoders, which explains why when I bought and compared the M3 Pro versus the M3 Max, the Max was so much better while video editing. Because as I now know, hardware decoders are the real MVP when it comes to video editing. Moving forward, I was worried that if I built the latest AMD or Intel system, I would repeat the past since I didn't know about hardware decoders. I was hoping they would just have enough raw power to blast through the video editing. But it seems to me like if you don't have built in hardware decoders for your codecs, no matter how much horsepower you have, your video editing experience is going to suck. The newer Intel CPUs have QuickSync, which supports hardware decoding. While I don't think the AMD CPUs do, I'm not too sure about the AMD video cards either. This is why it seems like Intel might be the way to go for DaVinci Resolve anyway. So if you are going to build or buy a computer to help you edit videos or for growing your YouTube channel, make sure whatever you buy has the correct hardware decoders in it. Because if you don't, your video editing experience is going to be miserable. Now say you just built a computer that doesn't have the correct hardware decoders for your chosen codec. Don't worry, you can still use proxies to make the experience much better. It really isn't that bad. And also I do use Resolve Studio, but I think their free version supports GPU acceleration nowadays, which is sweet. However, you might wanna double check on that. I'm gonna be talking about Resolve soon, so I'll get into that shortly on the channel as well. Jeez, it feels like you need to be a detective to figure this stuff out sometimes. I mean, I don't know, maybe this stuff is obvious for some people, but I don't have a background in computers and it hasn't been obvious for me. I've literally spent years doing this stuff and I'm only now realizing what's going on. See, with Apple, stuff just works. It's great. For people who don't really give a hoot and just want things to work, it's awesome. You pay the Apple tax, but stuff just works. But for people like me who want to understand what is going on and why it's happening, knowing what I know now and being able to build around my needs with the exact gear I want within a budget, I mean, that's so cool. Now I can build my PC that will shred video editing and let me do some high quality gaming, something I haven't been able to do with Apple. I still love my MacBook Pro and I think it's a great choice. Just now I realize there are more affordable options that can actually compete and allow users to stay in the Windows ecosystem if they so choose. And again, Apple's portable power is second to none. The fact my M1 Max still rips 4K editing on battery still blows my mind. It's amazing. Okay, my journey isn't over yet. I'm not exactly sure what I'm gonna build. This was a huge discovery for me and I wanted to share it with you. Hopefully you too were able to learn a little bit more just about how important hardware encoders and decoders are when it comes to video editing. It's a must. 
I will link this page below for you. If you have any questions about it, let me know below and I will do my best to answer it. So let me ask you, have you ever run into any of the same problems I have along the way? You know, maybe you get a new camera, shoot some footage, load it into Resolve and oh no, it's a slideshow. Not knowing the codec you were using was the main problem. Ugh. I'm curious if anyone else didn't realize the stuff either. If you wanna learn how to easily make proxies with Resolve, be sure to check out the video I made on that. I'll link it here. Otherwise, here's what YouTube thinks you'd like to watch next. If you enjoyed the video or got value from it, I would really appreciate it if you take a second and click the like button. It's the only way for my small channel to grow. As always, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time on the Sad Studio. Dad!